What's going on everyone? Garnet Walters here again and I'd like to thank you for checking out today's video. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button and click on that bell so you know when a new video comes out. Um, I'd like to thank all of you who subscribed so far. I really appreciate the support and I hope you're enjoying the videos. So today's question is, can you break down how you practice for a gig first daily? So the way that I practice for the gig and the way that I practice daily, uh, they're interchangeable or they're connected. And the reason why I said they're connected is because, you know, I try and practice, you know, every day and I try to um, balance everything out in terms of what I want to practice. So when I start practicing, I start with a warm up. And when I'm warming up, um, my warm-up consists of practicing scales. So I would have like a key for the day. So um, my key for today would be the key of E. And what I would do is I would play. I'm getting my metronome together here. Um, so I will play all my scales and modes in the key of E. E being a key center. So right now I have it at 90 and this is what I would do. I'll just start playing scales, you know. Making sure that I'm relaxed. Playing the major scale, I go to Dorian mode. I would do that I'll go through all the modes from the major scale Ionian to Locrian in the major scale and then I would do the same thing with the harmonic minor scale and I'll do the same thing with the melodic minor scale I'll go through all the modes starting on E then after that I would do 10 to 15 minutes of sight reading so I would just take some from you know music that I'm not familiar with and then just read through it and I will set a timer, which is really important because when you set the timer, it helps you to focus more. That's what well, if I find it helps me more to focus. And uh, in, in, in that, I'm not wasting any time. So I have the timer and everything. And once the timer goes off, that's it. I can't go back and do anything else. So I warm up that way. Um, then after that, uh, I start to prioritize. So if I have um, gigs coming up, what I'll do is I'm going to go by what's most important. So if I have a gig, let's say that's coming up um, in like a couple of weeks, I would uh, take that workload and break it up into smaller bite-sized um, uh, manageable pieces. So if I have 10 tunes I need to learn, I'll learn two songs a day and what I would do is I would just listen to the song over and over and then I would play along with it just so I can at least get the feel of it and then um, I would just listen to that song or those two songs the whole day and just concentrate on that with that way and I, I do it that way so that by the time the gig comes around or even the rehearsal comes around I'm not overloaded and that I'm prepared. And also um, with, with, with practicing for the gig and preparing for the gig, um, I have my binder right here where I have all of this, the songs, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna play charted out, you know? And it's not bad to chart out your music. It's okay to do that. 
You know, it's it's okay to do that. It's better you chart it out. You know, I often say, when in doubt, chart it out. That's fine. You know, because you want to sound, you want to you know sound good when you're playing. You want to know what you're doing. So um, so I prioritize with you know what songs I need to learn and what gigs are coming up. So if there's a gig that's coming up further down the line, I'll start brushing up on that stuff. I'll start you know uh, listening and then checking it out. You know, and then, you know, as the guys gets closer, I'll begin to really, really dig into it. Um, like I also play for a church full time. So I have to learn those songs. There's new songs like every week. So I have to, you know, those that's definitely like on the list, you know, high priority because I need to get the songs ready for rehearsal and then be able to play it, you know, properly on a Sunday. So um, I just you know, prioritize, that's, um, that's going to be the constant theme here, just prioritizing um, what's most important. After I practice, you know, the stuff for the gig, then I start to work on stuff that I want to work on that I feel like I need to improve on. So I will go back to the sight reading thing because I will always want to improve on my sight reading. And then I also want to work on any ideas that I may have or any pieces that I want to learn. Like I'm, I've been on this thing lately where I want to get back into playing, um, the classical music. So I want to, you know, start learning the Bach, you know, two part inventions. I want to get back into that, you know, because it's been on the back burner for so long because, you know, the, the songs I need to learn for gigs, they're higher priority than what I want to work on for myself, you know? Um, so after I learn all the gig stuff, if I have a chance, I'll get to the stuff that I want to learn. Also, another thing to consider is that when you get tired and you feel like your mind is drifting, that's when you should just stop. You just stop what you're doing and it's okay to take a break. You know, go do something, go take a walk or something, go for a drive, go to the mall, whatever you want to do. And then when your mind is right and you feel like, ready to go back in and, and start practicing again, then go ahead and do that because it doesn't make sense to put in all these hours and stuff when your mind is tired for most of that time because you're not going to retain any of the information that you're trying to learn. So I find that for myself that when I say that, when I see that I'm getting tired, I'm just like, I'm tired. Good night. So it's important to know when your mind is getting tired. Another thing to consider as well is that you make sure that your practice is very intentional, meaning that when you know that you've made a mistake, know that you made the mistake and then correct it right away because it's those little mistakes that come back to haunt you when you're playing in the rehearsal or in, even in the gig. So if you don't take care of it then, it's going to come and get you later. There was a book that I talked about in my top 10 influential books called The Musician's Way by Gerald Clickstein. And he talks about how to structure your practice. And it's not just like, this is how you're supposed to practice, but it's tailor-made how you want it to work. But there are principles in there that you can draw from. So I'd like to thank you for checking out today's video. I'm going to put a link in the description and it's going to take you to my website. And on my website, is going to be some free resources and there's going to be a checklist on things you can do to improve on your practicing. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button. And I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed so far. I really appreciate your support and I love answering your questions. And if you have any practice tips or ways that you practice, please feel free to put something in the comment because I'd love to read them. And hopefully, you know, I'll try it and add it to whatever I do practicing.